Our guest today is Cook County Board President. She was elected one year ago. Prior to that, our guest today served as the alderman of the fourth ward and has been a dedicated community leader for over two decades. She earned her bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of Chicago. There we go. She is married and has two children and three beautiful grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, Cook County Board President, Tony Preckwinkle. <laughs> Madam President. One year ago today, I was sworn in as the 34th Cook County Board President. That was after more than two years of traveling around the county, learning firsthand about the issues facing us, speaking with thousands of residents, and hearing their concerns. Two years of long hours and hard work, and that's before I even walked in the door. <laughs> Our county needed a new direction. For too long, Cook County had been adrift without a strong sense of purpose, responsibility, or accountability. I knew this undertaking would be difficult, but Cook County residents deserve someone who would work hard for them. Government can sometimes be paralyzed by patronage, partisanship, and the sheer complexity of the problems that we face. But I've always believed that if you had a vision, if you were willing to work hard, you could make it a reality. It was with this frame of mind that we went to work. We acted immediately and decisively. We encouraged collaboration and cooperation from every sector. We worked with our board of commissioners and our separately elected officials. And I'm particularly grateful that so many of the commissioners are here today. We engaged the support of the Civic Consulting Alliance to bring us unprecedented pro bono assistance from the private sector. We engaged the civic and foundation community to pursue reform. I want to thank, <clears throat> I want to thank in particular the Civic Consulting Alliance. Uh, they have been wonderful in their uh, cooperation, in their recruitment of, of other partners to come to the table. I, I'm, I don't think we could have done the good work over the past year uh, without their help and support. So I'll tell the story on myself. Um, <clears throat> Cook County is 80% Democratic, and so I figured after I won the Democratic primary, uh, I would begin to go around and make my, my calls and talk to people. And I went to the Civic Consulting Alliance and asked them right off the bat for their help, because I knew of their good work with the city of Chicago and the CTA and the Chicago Public Schools and the state of Illinois. But to my knowledge, they'd never been involved in Cook County. And uh, Brian Fabes <clears throat> just kind of looked at me and said, you know, you actually have to get elected before you can get our help. So um, the day after I got elected, November 3rd, I called up Brian and said, okay, it's that time. And they have been just wonderful. Today, as we commemorate our first year in office, I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish. We overwhelmingly passed two budgets in the last year. We instituted performance management to demand more accountability from our operations and our employees. We focused on critical public safety reform, and we worked to strengthen our healthcare system. In short, we launched a campaign to reinvent Cook County government. I want to thank all the elected officials who've supported these efforts, and I want to recognize those who are with us today. First and foremost, the Finance Committee Chair, John Daly. Grateful. My own my own commissioner, as he introduced himself, uh, Jerry Butler. 
Chuy Garcia, who's our floor leader. Commissioner Gorman, Commissioner Fritchie, Commissioner Silvestri. Did I miss anyone else who's present? Commissioner Murphy, thank you very much, Joan. I appreciate your help. I want to acknowledge all of them, and I'm grateful to them. I also want to thank Cook County Clerk Dorothy Brown for being here today and for her cooperation over the last several cycles in our budget process. And I want to take a moment to thank everyone in my administration who's worked so hard over the last year to bring us to this point. Several of them are here today with me. Uh, first of all, my Chief of Staff, Kurt Summers, who just this week was acknowledged in the Crane Chicago Business Pages as one of our leading young people, 40 under 40. Congratulations, Kurt. <laughs> Superintendent of the Forest Preserves, Arnold Randall, an old friend and colleague from our city days. <clears throat> We're grateful for his leadership and Mary Lariah's leadership in our Forest Preserves. And then I'm going to run through some of the other staff who are present, and forgive me if I don't rem remember everyone. Our Chief Administrative Officer, Robin Kelly, our Chief in uh, Information Officer, Greg Wass, our Bureau Chief of Economic Development, Maria Saldana, Bureau Chief of Human Resources, Maureen O'Donnell, and last but definitely not least, our Finance Team, Chief Financial Officer, Tarek Malhans, and Budget Director, Andrea Gibson, who we've worked very hard over the last couple months. Our first step was to begin to put our financial house in order. On December 6, 2010, we were already a week into the 2011 fiscal year and we had no budget. Not only no budget, but no plan for a budget. In roughly two months, we produced a budget, passed it, and closed a $487 million gap. Our first budget included a commitment to roll back on the Stroger sales tax increase that had been a, a burden to our families and to our businesses. And because of that commitment, we will save Cook County residents an additional $440 million by 2013. <laughs> Early in this prog process, I said that no one would be absolved and no one would be alone, and I meant it. I was also determined that the President's office would lead by example. In our first year in the offices under the President, we made a 17% cut in our overall budget. Within my own office, my own personal staff, we cut by 30%. We reduced non-personnel costs by 51%, and on top of that, I took a 10% pay cut, which my husband originally proposed, although I'm not sure he still thinks that's such a good idea. <laughs> Today, we've reduced the staff of the President's office by 50%. The first step in having a disciplined budget, as Andrea Gibson told us, was to have a disciplined budget process. That's why, as soon as we passed the 2011 budget, after a very long evening for everyone that I think ended at 4.30 in the morning, um, we quickly began working on next year's budget. With a $315 million deficit, our second budget proved to be even more difficult than the first. Although the number was smaller, the situation was more challenging because we've already uh, exhausted our short-term options. There was no longer any low-hanging fruit. In this year's budget, you will see that less than 1% of the total is made up of one-time solutions, such as a TIF surplus. Instead, we made strategic structural changes, including 800 layoffs. And that's one of the toughest parts of my job. As I said, I had no illusions about how difficult it might be, but I never imagined that I would walk in the door in my first year and have to put over 1,000 people out of work. I know that, that most of these people were ordinary, hardworking residents, and it's very difficult to accept that. Totaling $800 million in savings to the taxpayers, the past two budgets reaffirm my commitment to fiscal responsibility within Cook County government. It's a commitment that I'm determined to keep, and that determination is bolstered by the support I've received from residents. Our residents clearly want a new direction for Cook County, and it starts with responsible spending and accountability. They want leadership from the county that is willing to make tough decisions. 
and we've had to make our share of those already. But it's not simply enough to cut government. We have to rethink the way it works. I've long said that government has two obligations, to provide good service and to do that as effectively and efficiently as possible. After being elected, I asked a diverse group of business, civic, and community leaders to come together. Led by the Civic Consulting Alliance, we secured over $5 million in pro bono services to assist in our comprehensive reform efforts. From this collaborative approach, we implemented wide-ranging reforms. We instituted long overdue desk and compensation audits, transformed our IT systems, improved our purchasing processes. We even increased our energy efficiency. With the help of our pro bono partners, we provided training, resources, and additional support to county agencies to drastically improve their performance through our STAR, Set Targets, Achieve Results initiative. We're holding all agencies, including ourselves, accountable by requiring the preparation of a quarterly report to establish measurable goals and detail our plans to meet those goals. The idea here is fairly simple. Instead of rewarding failure, we will only reward success. Instead of funding the status quo, we will invest in proven performance. This is a strategy that most businesses and organizations already employ. For the county, it means for the first time we are building the infrastructure for tomorrow. However, our performance management initiative does more than just provide the data necessary for this type of management. It ensures the environment for collaboration, which is needed to produce the structural changes we envision. For the first time, all of Cook County's public safety agencies are sharing the same data, using it to set cross-department goals and working together to achieve them. We spend too much money detaining nonviolent offenders. We're increasing alternatives to incarceration, such as electronic monitoring for these offenders. At the same time, we're investing in community-based alternatives to reduce the number of our youth detained in the Juvenile Temporary Detention Center. And we're focusing on expanding and strengthening pre-trial pre services and pursuing bond court reform. Unprecedented, unprecedented collaboration is clearing the path for meaningful reform across county agencies. It's been more than 30 years since Cook County issued its tax bills on time. Through the collaboration and cooperation of the property and taxation agencies, we're working with the constellation of separately elected officials by increasing the funding to the Board of Review and our committed IT staff to make this a reality in 2012. None of this would have been possible if we hadn't also reformed the way we worked. Despite divisions and disagreements, hesitations and, and fears, we persisted because we chose to move forward as one county. Through the leadership of this office and with your help, we are shaping a better Cook County, a more responsible Cook County. As a result, we're better equipped to keep the promise of health care to those uninsured and underinsured. We're working with the Cook County Health and Hospital System to increase its effectiveness and efficiency and improve the quality of care that's delivered. This is important now more than ever. In our tough economic climate, many individuals are losing their jobs, and with those jobs, their health care coverage. All the while, the costs of health care delivery continue to rise. Now, even as health care reform promises to reduce the pressures faced by so many Americans, it challenges our Cook County health care system to be more competitive. Historically, our health care system largely served as an option for those who had no other choice. We can no longer afford to be the system of last resort. We have world-renowned doctors and state-of-the-art facilities. We have to make sure that our system operates effectively and efficiently to support them. Because the question we will soon face is this. If individuals have a choice, will they continue to choose Cook County? Or will we become a system for those who have fallen through the social safety net and the undocumented for whom we get no reimbursement? In October, a new chief executive officer 
came to Cook County, Dr. Ram Raju. And since then, we formed a partnership focused on realizing the potential within the healthcare system. Dr. Raju has already exhibited a, a profound willingness for collaboration and cooperation. It's because we worked together through the budget process that we were able to reduce the county subsidy without impacting patient care. Thank you very much, Dr. Raju. It's through this commitment to a collaborative process that we have been able to make historic changes, all in the interest of building a sustainable financial future for county government. Since declaring my intention to run for this office, I knew that the biggest challenge would be to change the culture of Cook County. During my campaign, county employees would come up to me on the street and say, I'm working hard. But you know, there's somebody in my office who reads the newspaper all day or who is on their personal cell phone all day. That presented a real challenge. We approached this first by making our standards and our goals very clear. Secondly, we instituted measures to ensure accountability and responsibility. On day one, I laid out our four tenets, fiscal responsibility, innovative leadership, transparency and accountability, and improve services. These four basic principles shape every one of our decisions. We published our full transition report, offering employees and residents alike the opportunity to see our roadmap for the future. We published our budget, we published our quarterly performance reports, everything. In a similar vein, we've posted our one-year report card on our website, www.cookcountyil.gov, as of this very morning. And for their hard work in preparing this report, I want to thank our policy team, Neil Carre and Andrew Schwarm. <laughs> On day two, we began enacting measures to ensure responsibility and accountability to these principles and goals. I issued an executive order mandating that all of the president's office's office employees be required to participate in ethics training. And even with our fiscal challenges, I increased the funding and then the authority of the Office of the Inspector General. In a year when most offices took double-digit cuts, knowing the importance of holding our government accountable, we allotted a 31% increase to the Office of the Inspector General. Every employee will understand their responsibilities when they work for Cook County and the Office of the President. As Cook County Board President, I'm committed to creating a culture of competence and dedication. I'm committed to engaging and drawing on the talents from the diversity of Cook County in order to deliver services more effectively and efficiently. It's not just about my time in office. I want to leave a legacy of professionalism and accountability. We're setting a new foundation for Cook County government. And because of that, we're truly able to push the boundaries on what for too long has been the status quo. We forged a partnership with Mayor Emanuel in the city of Chicago that has already saved our government's $11 million. We project 66 to $140 million in savings for the two governments over the next several years. Together, we're working to improve the services for all of the county's residents. More recently, we've come together with a shared commitment to better serve our unemployed and underemployed. We know that the only way to have real job security is to get a good job with growing income. And to have that, you need real skills and the ability to learn new ones. Under the leadership of Cook County Works Director Karen Norrington Reeves, we will streamline today's patchwork of training programs between the city and the county and make them a source of new skills for our residents. This approach will enable companies to find and train employees to fit the jobs of the 21st century. Neither geographic boundaries nor systemic inefficiencies will be obstacles. When a new business moves into the area, they need a workforce that is ready to meet their needs. But we also need to communicate to businesses that they can and should hire locally. Though we are making a difference, our work has just begun. The other day I was speaking with someone about the past year in office. We talked about our two budgets, the sales tax rollback, performance management, our efforts around pension reform, 
And he asked, isn't that enough? I couldn't help but laugh because I know how much work there is ahead of us. And so today I resolve to continue the journey of reform and renewal, to guarantee health care for all, to find new ways to reduce the jail population, and provide services for those suffering from substance abuse. We must continually renew these commitments. I've always held that change is possible with collaboration and cooperation. Over the next three years, I will continue to work with the Board of Commissioners and other county elected officials to bring real countywide reform to the residents of Cook County. And that, that's what keeps me going. I'm often asked, given all the problems, the challenges, why would you even want this job? And do you actually like it? Many of you have probably heard me say that as a history teacher, I believe that democracy is at the same time the best and the most fragile form of government on earth. For the same reason, it requires an active, engaged citizenry. What keeps me going is hearing from someone on the street or a person in an audience like this one. Some will say that they have a new sense of faith in our county government or that they appreciate the work that we're doing. I am grateful to them for both their support and encouragement. But I'm a teacher, so I'm e equally grateful to those who come with questions today. It means you're engaged, you share my commitment to, to this government that has been allowed for too long to operate in the shadows. We know we have to face hard truths and take strong action. It's our shared belief in a better Cook County, our shared commitment to reform, and our shared pride at our accomplishments that will continue to move us forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You figured, you figured, we have to give him, he used to be the, uh, run the, the Milano Chamber of Commerce. Ms. Preckwinkle, <clears throat> are you available to consult with Italy on budget reform? Is that Chuck's question? <laughs> Uh, ah, well, I tell you what, I, I, uh, I don't pretend to be the expert on this. I, I would be glad to make available uh, Kurt Summers, my chief of staff, and Tarek Melhance, our chief financial officer, and Andrea Gibson, uh, our budget director. So yeah, we can, you can uh, see them after lunch here today. Um, I am available. Okay. Uh, Paolo Verdi speaking. Kent Griffith, where are you, Kent? Use your corner table? Where are you? Ah, you're in the back. Wolf Point Strategy. Please share with us, please share with us examples of union work rules that negatively affect the public good and identify the unions. I'll give you four minutes. So this is the proverbial loaded question. You know, look, um, we have some tough challenges that we, we face, um, but I think it's unfair to blame our workforce for the challenges. <clears throat> you know, I, I succeeded somebody who um, I usually describe as inept. In private, I am more, um, I started to say profane, but I probably shouldn't, <laughs> probably shouldn't say that. That's the other guy. <laughs> But the truth is, for a very long time, the leadership of Cook County was unwilling to take on the challenges that we faced. And we have a workforce that we can no longer afford to support. Um, and we've had structural issues that haven't been addressed for a very long time. Uh, going forward, we're going to put more um, energy into our performance management initiative to get a, a real handle on what we're doing and how to, how to do things better. And we're going to try to work on our, our pension challenges. Um, but those are issues that have been long-standing issues in the county. It shouldn't be that, you know, when you come into office in 2010, you're initiating a, a performance management initiative because there's never been any performance management before in Cook County. Uh, and it shouldn't be that you're, you're struggling to address a pension crisis that's been building for decades. So, you know, I, um, so I'm an elected official in democracy, and it's not surprising that I would put a lot of emphasis on leadership. But I think that the leadership that we've had in the county uh, <coughs> And the executive's office has not been willing for a long time to take on the challenges that the county faces, and we're reaping 
of the whirlwind as a result. So I'm, I'm not prepared to blame this on my workforce. Okay. Uh, we, don't, we only have one more question. I, other than employees and commissioners or other people here, I mean. Uh, there gotta be more questions, what is this? <laughs> I mean, Professor will have to make, give his questions and that could be dangerous. Uh, this comes from Dr. Ed Mazur, board member. Yesterday, Chicago Police Department Superintendent McCarthy said he did not favor the decriminalization of marijuana. Your position on this question. Um, so I, I've been uh, fairly open about this. Um, on the campaign trail, I talked all the time about how the war on drugs had failed, that it was really an attack on, on African American and, and Latino communities in this country. Um, <laughs> So if you look at drug use, illicit drug use, it's about the same across various racial and ethnic groups. It's something like 9 to 11 percent, African Americans, Latinos, whites, Asians. That's, it's pretty much consistent. But if you look at who gets arrested for drug offenses, it's almost entirely black and brown young men. Um, so my husband used, used to say with some great fury that, <clears throat> you know, we went to school at the University of Chicago in Hyde Park. There were lots of drug dealers on campus. Let's be real about this. None of them ever got arrested. And believe me, everybody knew who they were. <laughs> so, you know, we ha what we have is a criminal justice system that singles out certain groups of people um, for punishment, you know. 70% of the people in our jail are there for nonviolent offenses, many of them for uh, substance abuse charges, possession of small amounts of drugs or they're there, as Superintendent McCarthy pointed out to me in my first conversation with him, for things like prostitution and shoplifting, which many people engage in to get quick money for their drugs. So we're treating our public health problem, our substance abuse addiction problem, by uh, detaining people and incarcerating them, which is stupid and wasteful. So we've got to figure out how we can deal with addiction in this country, and we're starting in Cook County, uh, by trying to deal with addiction as opposed to uh, detaining people in jail. Uh, and let me just say <clears throat> um, another fact that my husband insists that I always mention in my speeches. Uh, we have 5% of the world's population in the United States, 300 million people, more or less. We have 25% of the people who are in jail or prison around the world. So unless you think that Americans are somehow innately more criminal-minded or innately more criminal, I don't know what the word, anyway, we're more likely to be criminals than people in the rest of the world. We're doing something terribly wrong, and we ought to figure out exactly what we can do to, to clean that up. Um, you know, Americans aren't more inclined to be criminals than anybody else in the world. It's just that we have really ridiculous uh, criminal justice policies that end up incarcerating l large numbers of people who ought to be treated for their substance abuse and their mental illness. Um, <laughs> So I was visited early on in my administration by folks from Thresholds, and uh, that's an organization that some of you may know. They work with folks who struggle with mental health issues. And they said that on any given day, a third to 40% of the people in the jail suffer from mental health uh, problems. So um, what happened in the 1980s when we talked about deinstitutionalizing the people who were mentally ill? Um, we didn't deinstitutionalize them. We transferred them from mental health hospitals to our jails. Um, so in lots of ways, uh, we have to rethink our criminal justice strategies. Um, what I've said before is that we ought to ticket people for low-level drug offenses uh, rather than uh, detain them, incarcerate them. It's a waste of uh, police time. It's a waste of our criminal justice uh, court resources. Um, we need to be smarter about crime, and at the moment, we're not doing very well across the country. Although I think the, because of our, ironically, because of the terrible budget crisis that we face at all levels in this country, local government, county government, uh, state government, um, people are beginning to look at the tremendous costs of, of uh, incarceration and detention of individuals and thinking about doing something different, maybe not out of compassion for them or the communities out of which they come, but just because of the physical realities. And uh, what I've usually said about this is I'll take allies wherever I can get them. So. I, I, uh, I hope that the city of Chicago will decide they're going to uh, ticket low-level drug of offenders, offenders, notwithstanding what the police superintendent has said. Uh, 
We have one more question, but I don't know about Ed, but I went to University of Chicago for many years. I didn't know where the drug dealers were. Ed. Unless they were hanging out at Harper or Regenstein, I had no idea where they were. Okay, uh, by the way, we will have- Well, I did. I freely admit, I know where the drug dealers are. That's why she was elected alderman. Okay. Uh, enough of that. We will have the McCarthy Preckwinkle debate uh, three months from now. Check your weapons at the door. Here we go. This is from last question from Luke Casson, because I have to get out of here and move to Will County. Luke Casson from Anderson and Casson. Please speak to the collaboration between other county elected officials. Is it working? If not, what do you need to make it work? Uh, one of the things I said on the campaign trail was that it was important for Cook to be um, a, a real partner in the region. Uh, when I went to visit the folks at the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, the Metropolitan Planning Council, Metropolis uh, 2020, all of them said that the Cook County had been, its representatives had been kind of on the sidelines or not engaged or whatever. So um, we have tried to be active participants in all those organizations. And likewise, uh, tried to work with uh, the elected officials in, in this, in this uh, six-county region. And um, we've come together a couple times, frankly, about transportation issues, John Gates, about Metra and RTA. Um, and I uh, hope and anticipate that we'll be able to work together on a broader spectrum of issues uh, going forward. But we came together around uh, transportation issues initially. That's it. Round of applause. Hold it. Thank you.